Welcome to a TRL podcast. The Research for Community Access Partnership, RECAP, is a six-year program of applied research and knowledge dissemination funded by UK Aid for the UK Department of International Development, DFID. The overall aim is to promote safe and sustainable rural access in Africa and Asia through research and knowledge sharing between participating countries and the wider community. Card No Emerging Markets UK Limited has been contracted by DFID to manage RECAP. There are two components under RECAP, the Africa Community Access Partnership and the Asia Community Access Partnership. AFCAP works in 12 African countries, ASCAP works with five countries in South Asia. Existing guidelines and documentation such as the TRL Overseas Road Notes series and the South African Technical Recommendations for Highways, which are commonly used by practitioners in Sub-Saharan Africa and, to a lesser extent, Asia, are in many cases outdated and do not reflect recent research findings. As part of the RECAP Way Forward Strategy approved by RECAP member countries and DFID, the development of a series of technical notes or guidelines was identified to address the shortcomings. Today we launched the first Rural Road Note, RRN, a guide to the application of pavement design methods for low-volume rural roads. This was prepared by TRL. The RRN gives guidance to practitioners on how to select and apply pavement design methods for low-volume rural roads. Broadly, this podcast aims to tackle two themes. Firstly, why is it that large parts of the rural road network of low- and middle-income countries, LMICs, is mostly earth and gravel instead of bituminous or concrete? Secondly, how do we effectively increase rural accessibility in LMICs and reduce poverty and support rural socioeconomic development through provision of sustainable, resilient, rural road infrastructure to the rural communities? Today, I am joined by Andrew Otto and Kenneth McCura of TRL. Perhaps we can start by asking you to introduce yourself. I am Andrew Otto, a Principal International Consultant at the Transport Research Laboratory in the United Kingdom. I'm a Chartered Engineer with 18 years experience in the field of civil engineering, materials, pavements and research. And I am the TRL team leader for the delivery of the project on the development of this rural road node. I'm Engineer Kenneth Mukura. I'm a civil engineer, and I work for TRL uh, in the UK, but mostly on the international team. Um, my areas of specialty um, include uh, pavement design, materials, hydrology and drainage, climate change, uh, capacity building and training. And um, uh, on this project, um, I am uh, the rural road uh, expert and I'm one of the key authors. In terms of the RRN, how do you define road pavement and what are road pavement design methods? Um, The general understanding uh, in the community of a pavement is that it's a footway and This differs uh, very much from what the engineering community defines a pavement as. In the engineering community, a pavement is a horizontal structure on which vehicles operate. So they include anything from unpaved roads up to motorways. They even include airport runways, industrial aprons, and footways and cycleways. Now, 
pavements can be categorized as unpaved or paved. And unpaved pa uh, pavements are made up of soil and gravel, whereas paved pavements are made up of asphalt or concrete, or they can be elemental in terms of uh, bricks and block pavers. Now, the focus of the rural road node is on rural road pavement. And this can be both unpaved or paved. Now, because of the traffic stresses or traffic effects that are endured by the various materials that our pavements are made up of, and because of environmental effects on these materials, different institutions have come up with various methods of designing these materials or specifying their quality and their quantity in terms of thickness so that the damage of both traffic and the environment is minimized. Now, in the rural road note, we deal with six of these design methods which cover different conditions and require different uh, material. Uh, I must emphasize that the methods we deal with here are empirically developed, and that means they were developed for a certain set of conditions under which uh, they would be guaranteed to perform well. So it is therefore imperative that in applying any of these methods, one understands their limitations and areas of application clearly. Kenneth, how do you define a low volume road? That is a good question. There are many different perceptions when it comes to low volume roads. Um, now, how do you define it? Uh, is it about the number of people? that are using that road? Is it the number of vehicles? Is it the traffic composition? You know, there are a lot of mixes like um, the non-motorized traffic, the motorized traffic, uh, heavy vehicles, light vehicles. Or is it how the road is designed and built? And how, do, how can people tell um, the difference between a low volume road and a high volume road? And is the definition the same everywhere? And these are the uh, things that people have been discussing or uh, um, technocrats and practitioners uh, dealing with low volume roads have been discussing these um, aspects. So the perception is different when it comes to low income countries and high income countries. What can be perceived as a low volume road in a low income country um, and, and, and as a low volume road in a uh, high income country, the perception is quite different. So when it comes to um, defining a low volume road, um, a consensus has been reached by the practitioners. And in that consensus, a low volume road is defined primarily by the amount of loading that is carrying. So when you're talking about traffic loading, we are talking about um, the axle loads and how much of those axle loads that the road can carry before it fails or through its life. And as, as you know, um, different vehicles and different axles have got different loads. So that has to be um, uh, uh, calculated on the basis of a standard. And that standard is what we call uh, an equivalent axle load. Um, so the, an equivalent axle load, uh, standard axle load, is one that is eight tons. So all the axle loads that pass through um, the road are then converted to the equi equivalent standard axle load. Now, it's the accumulation of these axle, uh, axle loads that is now used uh, to determine how much uh, a road can carry. 
Now, uh, in, as far as the definition is concerned, what we have, we have put in the rural road note, uh, the limit, the upper limit of the traffic loading uh, is 1 million standard access for low volume roads. And anything below that, that is what we consider as a low volume road. Anything above that is actually categorized as high volume. Um, then the other issue is basically the traffic volume. The traffic volume typically, um, it, it should be around 300, 400 vehicles per day. That's the typical limit uh, of low volume roads and anything below that is categorized as low volume. Above that is high volume. But this is a secondary factor in the sense that uh, when the conditions are right, you can have much higher traffic volumes. Um, and as long as the specification for the loading is satisfied, that is considered a, a low volume road. In addition to that, uh, low volume road is defined in terms of the materials that are used. And it is important to consider that um, the idea uh, behind this rural road note is to make sure that we use locally available materials. And in doing that, uh, a lot of research has been carried out to determine what sort of materials can be used uh, to, in order to minimize the cost of provision of low volume roads. So, uh, where we can use local available materials, even those that not meet uh, conventional specifications, that is how we define a, a low volume road. So there are different aspects to it. Um, so in LICs especially, uh, this is the definition that, that is used. Uh, that is the traffic loading, which is the primary one uh, aspect of the definition and then the traffic volume, and then the design aspects, including the materials as well. And then what is rural in this case? Rural is um, uh, any section, any section of road that is outside the boundaries of uh, urban settings, where the specifications and conditions that are applied in urban settings um, uh, do not apply, like speed, for example. If you've got 60 kilometers per hour, then outside the boundaries, then you can increase to more than 60. And also the geometric design and, the, and everything else. So this is how a low volume road is defined. Andrew, what is the rural road note? For instance, is it a book, a guideline or a manual? In uh, the area of civil engineering, there are three uh, main kinds of documents that are used. The first one are manuals, the second one includes guidelines, and the third ones are specifications. Now, manuals uh, contain a set of uh, well laid out instructions to follow. They generally don't give a lot of explanation about the context surrounding those instructions.